तू जिंदा है तू जिंदगी की जीत पर यकीन कर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तू जिंदा है ये गम के और चार दिन सितम के और चार दिन ये दिन भी जाएंगे गुजर गुजर गए हजार दिन ये गम के और चार दिन सितम के और चार दिन ये दिन भी जाएंगे गुजर गुजर गए हजार दिन कभी तो होगी इस चमन पे भी बाहर की नजर अगर कहीं है स्वर्ग तो उतार ला जमीन पर तू जिंदा है सुबह शाम के रंगे हुए बदन को चूम कर सिंस आई एम अ मिलिट्री पर्सन आई थिंक आई शुड स्टार्ट बाय सेइंग दैट माय सब्जेक्ट टुडे आई हैव चोजन माय सेल्फ इज द मिलिट्री डेमोक्रेसी एंड द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ कम्युनल हार्मनी आई थिंक आई नो अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट दिस Why am I here? I remember as a young boy of fourteen and a half or something like that, I was here in Mohammad Ali Road on the evening of this very date in the year 1948. I had finished my senior Cambridge in Delhi, so as a token of appreciation of the fact that I actually took the exam and actually went through the whole process my father said here is 100 rupees you please go on a tour and come back so i said thank you and i came to bombay and while i was walking on mohammad ali road around this time about 5:15 or something in the evening i saw suddenly everybody scattering running away from their streets and shutters being pulled down at a rapid pressure I said to myself, "I wonder what has happened." Fortunately, that was the time when Pandiji went on the air very, very quickly, and just as well he did, because there was so much confusion. Nobody knew what has happened, but he came on the air because those days, fortunately, there were no television, and uh, he said that. i want to reassure my countrymen that this is not a muslim who has killed gandhi ji who is assassinated he kept on repeating this message three four times because we are just just about beginning to slide back into our own in a way after the terrible terrible riots we saw when millions of people move from this side to that side and that side to this side and i have seen that with my own eyes all we read about you know live people being embarking in lahore and corpses coming in delhi and exactly the reverse you know from amritsar all lively people they think they are reaching home they were butchered and this was the truth and we thought we had recovered from it so i can understand why it was so important for pandit ji to make that call at that time because otherwise we would have seen a recurrence of the entire episode being repeated but today of course as the luckily in those days they didn't let the assailants go away they were caught suitably tried and punished today the story is different now this has left a very deep impression on my mind you can't forget these things so quickly and that was good 70 years ago or more than that and uh, i recall that uh, just before i took over as chief i said one thing i will reinstitute and that was first i paid a visit to rajghat took off my shoes and i was all in my medals and regalia and sword and what have you looking absolutely first class but no i said i must go to the father of the nation although he believed in tolerance and communal harmony and non violence in a very big way he was also a great truthful warrior and we still call him a warrior because he was a very courageous man 
full of inner strength which comes not with nuclear weapons and other super duper weapons we are now paying huge sums of money for, but comes from inner strength from inside the system. And I'm so grateful that is one lesson he left for the whole nation, at least I thought to follow all the way along. Today we observe it as a day as Martyr's Day. I don't think he was a martyr really, because he can never die. He lives on for every one of the us, every one Indian that is living today to follow. And those who follow us to follow, and, and so on. Oh, PD se PD aage jati hai na, uske kya But what to do? But it is good that we've all got together here to remember him and the wonderful things that he did. I joined as a cadet in January 1949 after going to the selection board in 1948 in a place called Naklau. It used to be called Naklau, Lucknow. <laughs> and nowadays, of course, we've got new names. I don't know if it has already got a new name today. I, it's possible. And whilst I was still a cadet in January 49, when I joined the then Royal Indian Navy as a cadet, in January 1950, and until then the academy was called Armed Forces Academy. So when somebody said, January 1950, we have become a republic, and all of a sudden, Royal Indian Navy, which was the senior service, suddenly became number two which is all right, I think it is only right in a country like ours, which has such a vast army and getting bigger by the day, that you have a system which, will, which is intrinsic and ours. So the army became senior, navy. But the thing I will never forget is that we still believed that that was the day when the new constitution of India was brought into force. We were all subject, and we were full of joy and happiness that at the end of almost two and a half years of intensive debate in the Constituent Assembly of India, we adopted that constitution. And of course, one of the first impacts of this Republic Day conversion from Armed Forces Academy to National Defense Academy, number one, whatever it was, things began to change. We used to have a civics teacher. Civics is a bad word nowadays, because nothing is civil about anything, though civics is out of the question. Um, and he used to say, he used to be very fond of teaching us rights and freedoms and so on. So he said, your right ends where my nose begins. I thought that was a beautiful way of putting it to young minds like myself. Uh, I'm still young, by the way. Uh, and I still remember at that time, all of us appreciated the Constitution. All of us respected the Constitution. We felt that this was long overdue, although it took a long time to debate, and every aspect was thrashed from left to right. It's like a football being kicked around. And uh, finally it emerged. It was made ours. And it's very unique. The people who contributed to that, I don't have to repeat it, but I will towards the end of the uh, talk of mine, which is another three and a half minutes to go, that I see. Uh, but. When I was named as the chief of the naval staff to be, so I planned now how should I plan the morning. So I went first to Rajgat. From there I came to the tomb of the unknown soldier, which is right under India Gate in Delhi, and went to the South Block to take over my command. It gave me immense joy and pleasure to see, to get to that area where we in the Navy 
believed in such a variety of peoples. Every parliament, uh, we used to be sent a questionnaire, please tell us how many SC, how many ST, how many Muslim, how many Hindu, ye falana, falana, falana. and I used to tell them, we don't keep such records, send it back. And we used to tell the ministry those days that this is off-site, <laughs> it's out. And can you believe you, can you ever imagine in a ship or in a submarine, you are sitting and eating and sharing the same table and bread together? It's absolutely ridiculous. So as a, as a serviceman, can you imagine a situation where you're literally brothers and sisters sharing a table or a place in a ship. Because well, your life depends on him, his life depends on you. You know, this nation of ours has had some sterling, absolutely outstanding warriors. And one of our biggest victories in battle was in 1971, when Field Marshal Sam Manick Shaw was the overall commander. I used to command a ship those days in the Eastern sector. And I still remember what, what galaxy we had. Nobody one worried about his caste or religion or what book he reads every Sunday or Monday or Friday. <laughs> but you see, the, uh, the time was such that we had to build India, truly. It was really after the riots and the partition and all the rest of it, which was horrible, but we slowly started rebuilding India. I know we have many flaws, we have many flaws, we have lots of things wrong. And Nayantaraji mentioned about Taklak. Do you know he had a son in the Air Force, a corporal? And then to say, wo beef rakha tha, ye kar raha tha, wo ye kya badmashi. You know, these sort of things are never brought out in the public, but it is a shame and a disgrace. I have written many letters to the Honorable President, our Honorable Prime Minister. I don't even get an acknowledgement from the Secretariat. I don't want the Prime Minister or the President to tell me I got my letter, no. But there were past Presidents and Prime Ministers who did reply to my letters. I have been retired 26 years. I went out of business in 1993. I've been a civilian since then, for all practical purposes, quote unquote. I shall definitely, definitely conclude by saying, this nation cannot afford to have national security of which we talk about with a broken rag taggle ramshackle split India on communal basis. This is utterly impractical, will never work, and I hope the people of India, who I know are very wise, they at least know what they don't want. <laughs> they are very intelligent people. They know what they don't want, and hopefully that is the answer we shall get. Thank you very much.